The moon has been there in orbit ever since, pulling on the oceans and seas, creating a tidal bulge, and literally stirring life into creation. So what if we nuked it? Blowing up the moon would have some dire consequences for our planet, somewhat like the film Oblivion, where aliens decide the best way to take us out is to destroy the moon. You might not know this, but Russia and the United States both had plans to nuke the moon. Back then, the political and cultural tensions between the United States and Russia made such desperate plans seem almost reasonable. In 1958, the Armour Research Foundation developed a plan to nuke the moon with guidance from the United States Air Force. The plan was said to be a study of the possible effects of nuclear detonation on the lunar surface and to ultimately judge the effectiveness of nuclear weapons in space. It actually turns out that both sides wanted to explode a nuclear weapon on the surface of the moon as a show of force and strength. We might have not known about all of this if it wasn't for Carl Sagan, who was working on a classified project to detonate a nuclear device on the moon. The Russians also had their own plan called the E-Project. Of course, none of this happened, and we ended up sending a man to the moon instead. So the idea of nuking the moon isn't a new idea. The question is, why would you want to nuke the moon? And what would happen if we could? Many of you probably already know that we simply don't have the technology to blow up the moon. Even if we used all the nuclear devices we had, the very worst that might actually happen is the moon would probably be in smaller pieces that would eventually reform again, although it would look a lot different than it does now in the night sky. But just for the sake of an experiment, let's just say we had the capability. As for why anyone would want to nuke the moon, that would be the million dollar question. Losing the moon would not have any positive effects on our planet. In fact, the moon is responsible for more than you might think. It turns out that our moon does a lot more than just give us light at night. Impact craters on the moon show that our lunar satellite has taken a few blows from asteroids that might have hit the Earth instead. Even if the Earth survived the effects of the moon being blown up, other space rocks could now hit the Earth. But that's just the beginning. Without the moon, there would be a lot of negative effects on the planet, depending on the way the moon exploded and which direction the pieces decided to go. Destroying the moon would result in approximately 7 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms of debris, which hopefully wouldn't hit the Earth in large chunks. But since the moon is kind of close to the Earth, you can bet that a lot of that debris is going to impact the Earth. You might be wondering how many nukes you would need to blow up the surface of the moon. Using some fancy online tools, it has been estimated that if the moon was blown up using nuclear weapons, it would take 9,000 15 megaton nuclear bombs, like the Castle Bravo bomb. If such an explosion combined were to happen at the same time, there would be big chunks of the moon flying through space, and a lot of those pieces would head straight enough to cause major catastrophic damage and hit the mainlands. There would be a rain of rock on the Earth from the exploded moon, it might take days for some of the pieces to reach us, but they would be visible from the sky as they hurtled towards the Earth. It is safe to say that the majority of the devastation on Earth would come from the debris of what was left of the moon. Rocks don't need to be huge to create massive damage. Consider the Chelyabinsk meteor, which entered the Earth's atmosphere undetected because it was hidden by the sun. The meteor was 66 feet in diameter and weighed 12,000 to 13,000 metric tons. The object exploded in an airburst at the height of around 97,000 feet. The explosion generated a bright flash that was brighter than the sun, and witnesses say there was intense heat. Seismic and infrasound measurements estimated the blast to be around 400 to 500 kilotons. That's 26 to 33 times as much energy released from the Hiroshima atomic bomb. Even though the bulk of the object's energy was absorbed by the atmosphere, 1,500 people were injured, mainly from shards of flying glass, as the shock wave damaged 7,200 buildings in six cities across the region. Now, imagine hundreds of these impacts over days or months. The devastation would be incredible, and humanity would have to seek refuge underground. A lot of this rock and debris would heat up and burn as it entered Earth's atmosphere, which would, in turn, heat up the atmosphere quickly and turn the Earth into an oven. This devastation doesn't account for the giant pieces which could be miles long in size slamming into the Earth, not to mention the other small fragments hitting the upper atmosphere and increasing the Earth's temperature. A cloud of dust would form and possibly cover the skies, blocking out all light except for the fireballs of lunar objects entering the atmosphere. 
And while all of this devastation is happening, there are bigger things about to happen that would change the Earth forever. The loss of the moon would affect the Earth's orbit, rotation, and wobble, and acts like a stabilizer. Without this stabilization, the Earth would begin to wobble more and more, and the seasons as we know them would cease as the Earth would swing around the Sun in an unstable and fluctuating orbit. The Earth could end up wobbling violently as it spins. The Earth might even tilt all the way over and lie on its side in relation to the Sun's orbit, resulting in extreme differences in temperatures and daylight. Other times, the Earth would be straight up and down, making nights and days equally long all year round. There would be no seasons. There would be periods with extreme weather with bigger differences between summer and winter. Thanks to our current moon, the Earth's axis stays tilted between 23 and 26 degrees and has kept it this way even over millions of years. The tides would be tiny in comparison to what they are now and the seas and oceans would become more calm, now dominated by the pull of the sun, which is 400 times larger in